now let us come to the ohm's law right the ohm's law let us revisit it we know what ohm's law is we know that whenever there is a there is a resistor okay and you through a variable voltage through a variable voltage you try to push some current through it okay then then you see that that this this the the voltage across this the voltage across this which is measured by m by a voltmeter okay and the current through this resistor the current through that resistor which is measured by an ammeter right so so this which is measured by an ammeter okay we see that v is directly proportional to i that means as you increase this current if this current goes up see this current and this current are supposedly the same theoretically but practically they are not because this voltmeter also draws some current out that's why i have put the ammeter here instead of putting it here theoretically it would have been okay if we if i had put it there but this will give you a more accurate value fine so so v is directly proportional to i and and when this this proportionality goes a constant pitches in that we call the resistance so right the arrow which which so this arrow this 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 shows that this voltage is a variable voltage okay so so you can vary it like a like knob of fan or something right so you can vary this voltage and this is called as resistance so this v is equal to i r relation that we have been taught in class 10 is what is called the ohms law right okay now let us say we 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 take this further right and we say that let us say that there is there is a a conductor okay let us say i have a conductor which looks something like that okay there is a conductor which has a length l okay a length l and an area of cross section a right okay and if i so so and and this is carrying it is part of a circuit and this is carrying a current i right then what happens there is a corresponding drop of a voltage There's a voltage drop. That is, I into R, where R is the resistance of this. Correct. Now what happens? I I remove this. I connect another identical conductor in series with it. Okay. So. the whole thing becomes something like that get that same length the same length l the same length l and the it 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 is carrying the same current i okay so what happens if if this length is also the same earlier the length was same 
then the potential drop also will have to be the same. Correct? So, what is VL left here? No, it is not VL. Actually, actually what I was trying to tell was, this is V and this, this length is, or, or hold on, let me, let me maintain the uniformity. Actually, what I was trying to say was, was here the length was L, here the length was L, L, and the potential drop also was V, right? Was V. So, so, so the total potential drop here is how much? Earlier it was how much? For, for this conductor, for, for the first conductor it was V and the current that was passing in was I, I named that R because that is what was the resistance of this. Now the total drop is 2V, current remains the same, so the resistance becomes 2 into V by I, so it becomes 2R, no? Why has it become 2R? Now it seems as if since the length has doubled, the resistance also doubles, right? So I can safely write that R is directly proportional to the length, okay? So the R is directly proportional to the length. I can write that, fine. Now I do something else. I take the same conductor the same conductor so so let me make some space here I take the same conductor okay This time it is carrying the same same current as earlier. So and I divide it into two, right? Yes. So if I divide it into two and it was earlier, this whole thing was carrying a current of I, right? Now I slice it like this. I slice it longitudinally so that this whole area gets divided into two. This whole area this whole area which was earlier which was earlier a has now become become a by 2 each a by 2 each okay so it has become a by 2 each this current is i okay this current this whole i got split into two i by 2 here and i by 2 here right Okay. Now, what happens? The the voltage that remains the same. Let me let me change the color. So so the voltage that still remains the same. So voltage remains V in both of them. Now, if I look at the sliced one half one upper half of the conductor, what happens? The voltage V remains the same, but the current I becomes I by 2. Earlier for the whole conductor it was V upon I is equal to R as was case here as was the case there. Now here what has become the what has it become the the, the in this in in this upper half right so 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 in this upper half if, if you look at that okay in this upper half the the current okay in this upper half of the conductor what happens what happens the current has become i by 2 the voltage remains the same so it becomes 2 into v upon i which is equal to which is equal to which is equal to 2r which is equal to 2r okay so somehow the the resistance has become 2r now what has happened the length has remained the same the area of cross section has become half 
the area of cross section has become half and the resistance has become twice so somehow it means that resistance is inversely proportional to the area of cross section do we get that yes okay so we have two conditions the first condition is that r is directly proportional to l and the second is that the r is inversely proportional to a now if i combine these two so r is directly proportional to l upon a is it not it is directly proportional to l upon a and and when i remove this constant this this, this proportional sign and replace it with uh, uh, with an equality a constant of proportionality rho comes in and and this rho is called called resistivity this is called resistivity and what happens this is something that is inherent to the material right inherent to the material that is it it depends on the material it is the characteristic of the material right how would this also changes it changes with with temperature right it changes with temperature if it changes with temperature and and in a conductor it changes differently okay so in a conductor it actually increases with temperature so as i increase the temperature and this rho changes then r will also change right so r is dependent with temperature and we know that in a conductor as we increase the temperature the resistance also goes up okay it increases so so that is that and and my resistance thus becomes dependent on three things so r is directly proportional to the length right directly proportional to to length and it becomes inversely proportional to to area to area and it depends on depends on rho which depends on depends on rho i i should, I should say it depends on on the it depends on the material right i should say it depends on on material so material and so so that is the rho part of it and since this rho depends on temperature i can say that this also depends on temperature but that is that is not some independent variation due to temperature this is because this rho changes rho is a function of temperature right this was something that we had earlier derived right we had earlier earlier derived but you can say that we have been able to prove this now this we have been able to prove here right by using the ohms law fine okay 